What happens when one of the world's biggest tech companies lands in India's tech capital? You get a front row seat to the future. We were recently at Google I.O. Connect Bengaluru 2025, walking through the expo zones, trying the demos, talking to developers, and sitting down with Google's top AI minds, including Omar Sansevero from the Gemma team and Manish Gupta, Senior Director of Google DeepMind. And let me tell you, this wasn't just a product showcase. It was a signal that Google is betting big on Indian developers to shape the next generation of AI. I'll tell you all about it on this episode of Point Break. Let's get the headline out of the way. Gemini 2.5 is here in full force with models optimized for everything from long reasoning to fast image generation. Gemini is now in students' hands across India thanks to Google's free AI Pro plan. We saw updates across image, audio, and even video generation with Imagine 4 and BO3 delivering crystal clear visuals and synced sound built to power your next app, music video, or cricket cartoon. Hi, I'm at the Google I.O. in Bengaluru and I am right now standing in the Experience Zone, the Expo. A uh, lot of cool things happening around me, demos, uh, live screening, live projects and a lot of startups showcasing their very cool parts. So let's just dive into it. At the AI Cricket Challenge booth, we saw Gemini pull real match data, generate quirky cartoon scenes and bring India versus Australia to life. And yes, I tried my hand at it. So did my fellow journalist, Siddharth Jindal. Let's just say we both were equally bad. I mean, good. So this is very cool, right? So what we have done that we have created an AI generated demo and we have actually set up four cameras. And as you can see that it actually analyzes how you actually bat and it calculates your score across three parameters, accuracy, okay. power and style. Oh, okay. So it's all Gemini generated. All right. And then it will give you some recommendations as well. That okay. how you did well, how you can actually improve your game. And then you can actually generate your, your pick up your best shot. Oh, okay. Right? You can generate an uh, image using imaging, right? With a that theme that you have set. Oh, okay. Right? okay. And then you can also generate your favorite video using Vue. Oh, well. okay. Perfect. So, you're so it's an AI, AI generated demo for your performance. Right. And right next to it, Androidify yourself. Using on-device AI, I got turned into a pixel-perfect Android bot, and so did half the crowd. It's all powered by Gemini Pro and Imagine, running in real time. Androidify, it's, uh, the Androidify installation is a pretty interesting one. It's where what we're trying to do is we're trying to take uh, different uh, people, have them almost convert themselves into an Android bot, and everything that we've built is built on Google Imagen technology. Right. So everything you're going to try is going to be on Imagen 3, um, we've fine-tuned the models, so we've actually taken uh, the general image and models and added data to it. So okay. we've taken the data and we've fine-tuned it to be able to create Android-specific images. Yeah, cool. So here we have a demo using a Formula One e race car uh, with a driving coach that's powered by Gemini 2.5 Pro Live API. Okay. So Gemini has all the information about the, the manuals for the car and is able to see the screen as they're driving yeah. and can coach the driver on what they need to do to get out of the pits or turn the pit limiter off or get started as they're driving around and coach them with any tips that they need. Uh, so this can be things like uh, how to turn the pit limiter off, it can be how to take turns better, or even just to learn about the cars. Okay. But behind the boots, the real shift is in what Google's opening up for developers. I caught up with Omar Sanseviru, staff developer relations engineer, to talk about Gemma. Google's family of open models built to run on your laptop or even your phone. From image understanding to structured JSON output, we saw it all running live right from his laptop. And in case you missed it, yes, someone's building a dolphin language model with Gemma. A wonderful keynote session, we were part of it. And of course, the focus was on Gemma models. An interesting thing was you have uh, specific models for specific industries, like you have Med Gemma, uh, you have Pali Gemma. So, uh, any reason or, or what is the what's the reasoning that you have for making these specific models? Yeah, that's a great question. And maybe let me share a bit more about Gemma and, and the open source ecosystem, sure. right? So. We released Gemma as a foundation for the ecosystem to build AI models on top of it, right? So yeah. uh, Google has released uh, Gemma, Gemma 1, Gemma 2, Gemma 3, which these are the, 
best open models that can run in single consumer GPUs for general use cases. So that can be conversations, some coding, some uh, following instructions, multilingual, uh, multilingual scenarios, and that kind of stuff. But of course, there are cases where you may want to have a model specialized for your own use case, right? Uh, we provided the tooling to the ecosystem to be able to modify the models for their own use cases. That's the magic of open models. You can download the model and with your own data, modify the model for your own domain, your own, uh, your own data, your own company's use case, right? But we have also released some open models, uh, Gemma variants, mm -hmm. that are, again, based on the same foundation model, so in Gemma 3, for example, yeah. but for different disciplines. So MedGemma has been a, quite an exciting one. It's a very interesting one. We have heard lots of interest from the community. We have been working in this uh, healthcare uh, sector as well for quite some time in the research area. And we have been working uh, cross-disciplinarily uh, in making sure that we have a powerful multimodal model for this discipline. So, for this, uh, MedGemma is really based on Gemma 3. Uh, it's a very strong multimodal model. That means that you can pass both images and text. Yeah. And it can understand uh, medical-related uh, images and text as well. Right. And uh, I mean, look at your history. You work with a lot of open source models, open models, yeah. open weight models. So what is your take on the whole open source ecosystem and, and where is it headed? Yeah, I think uh, so I've been working in open models for a very long time, for many years, and I think Open models is about collaboration, right? It's about giving control to, to the users, to developers, right? It enables users to develop uh, powerful models for their own use cases. What is interesting from the Gemma perspective is that we want to make the strongest models that you can use in consumer compute, right? So that you can run the model in your own computer at home or your own laptop or even your own phone. We are not interested in releasing these huge, huge models that will not be useful for the normal developer, but instead we want to provide a model that can be used by most of the community. And it's very exciting to see the adoption has been widespread. The capabilities of today's models, uh, open models, are just as good as the closed source models from maybe one and a half year ago. So it's been quite exciting to see how the capabilities have, uh, have kept going up. So I think in terms of what we can achieve in a device, so locally in my own computer, we will keep seeing a trend of these models getting better and better with maybe more modalities or maybe understanding more languages or understanding like better coding, uh, like more complex coding scenarios, which would enable agentic use cases. Uh, yeah. just to make sure and, and like you said, uh, people want smaller models to be open source, right? Yeah. I mean, but why is that? Wouldn't they want like a large model, like say if you want to use it at the largest I mean, some people would like lar larger models, but uh, so for Gemma, we have released models that go from 1 billion parameters all the way up to 27 billion parameters. And 1 billion parameter is like a nice size that you can run actually in your phone. A 27 billion parameter is something that you probably don't have a computer to run this at home. So we have released some techniques and some tooling that will enable the community to run these models in their own computers. But if you begin to go larger and larger, the number of people that will benefit from this begins to be much smaller, right? So how we are focusing in terms of on-device is really to share with the community open models that they can use and benefit for, for their use cases. Got it. Uh, any interesting use cases you can talk about where your developers have built you know, some, some very interesting solutions? Yeah, so Gemma has a very strong multilingual base, so it's already uh, strongly multilingual. But we have seen many local communities modifying Gemma for their own use cases, for, uh, for their own languages, right? And making a strong model for a language is not just about making a model that can translate, right? It's about making a model that is culturally uh, contextual, like it, it, is, it understands the context in which the language is being spoken, right, in the local region. Uh, and in that sense, we have seen many different groups. So for example, AI Singapore has trained a model called Silayon. And Silayon is a, a state-of-the-art model based on Gemma 2 for 14 Southeast Asian languages. Mm -hmm. uh, and similarly, here in India, there is Sarvam. Sarvam has been doing quite a bit of research on top of Gemma. Just a couple of weeks ago, they announced a, a Sarvam Translate model, which is for five languages here in India, and uh, to, to do translation between these languages. So, it's been quite exciting to see how the community is leveraging uh, Gemma models for pushing forward their capabilities in terms of translation. 
Another exciting uh, use is for robotics. We're starting to see uh, with the latest GEMA models that are multimodal and hence can understand images or videos. We are seeing people using this for robotic applications. So this is very early stage, but it's quite nice to see what, uh, what the community is building with it. Oh, that sounds very interesting. Which brings me to the next question you brought up, Salma. So how has the Indian developer ecosystem been with the whole GEMA adoption? Yeah, I think uh, India is one of our top uh, developer markets, right? Uh, there's a huge, amazing, uh, quite exciting ecosystem here. We are collaborating with many groups here. Uh, we organize hackathons, we organize events with the startup ecosystem. So we are we are engaging quite a bit here uh, with groups here. Uh, Sarvan is one of our key partners, uh, not, not just in, in India, really in, in all of the world, because they are doing state-of-the-art models uh, for for multilinguality, which is one of the main goals for Yammer, right? So that has been quite exciting. Uh, and even like quite a bit of the research that happens for Yemma has been done here in India. So for example, uh, Matformer is the architecture that we use for the latest Yemma 3N model. Yemma 3N is a model that we use for uh, uh, very small like uh, phones, uh, like specifically for on device. So it's a model optimized for mobile use cases. Uh, and the architecture is Matformer, and that was developed by the DeepMind team based here in here in India. Got it. Yeah. And and just coming to the end of this conversation, uh, coming to the end of this conversation, just one last bit on. Um, but there, I'm sure there's still challenges that exist, right? Yeah. So what do you see? Any common pattern or behavior that you see in the developer ecosystem, which is kind of you know shying them from adopting? Yeah, models. that's a great question. I, as I was sharing before, there's already this large ecosystem of people picking them and fine-tuning for their own use cases, right? So in total, there are over 80,000 models uh, based on Gemma out there. In total, they have gathered over 180 million downloads. So the results are quite impressive. Uh, and I think what we will be seeing more and more is, uh, as we were talking at the beginning, how Gemma is being used for different disciplines, right? And this requires not just understanding AI or understanding a specific domain, but it rather requires understanding both domains, right? So have domain expertise, but at the same time understand AI and how AI can be leveraged for these disciplines. So what I expect during the next uh, 6, 12 months, 18 months is people from both worlds connecting and seeing how AI can be applied for different industries. Uh, and I think that that's still one of the main challenges, right? We need to get more people talking and collaborating for all of these different areas. So I think that that will be one of the key areas. And the second one would be agentic, uh, agentic systems. So uh, to be able to build strong, capable, agentic systems that can handle very complex tasks. You require models that can understand very long context with very strong coding capabilities. Uh, Yama is very good for following instructions. It's very good to have conversations, to translate, to understand images. But it's still not as good as we would like for coding. So it's something where the team is working. We are pushing things forward. And I do expect that uh, during the next months, we will see the coding capabilities and agentic capabilities getting better and better. So, yeah. oh, great, great. Thank you so much, Omar, for your time. Yeah, thank you so much. Google's push isn't just global. It's deeply India first. Gemini now speaks nine Indian languages. Startups like Sarvam are using Gemma to build translational models that preserve cultural nuance across 22 Indian languages. On stage, a strong message. India isn't just building for 1.4 billion. It's building for 8 billion. From quick commerce apps built in Firebase Studio to new XR platforms, Gemini SDKs, and the next gen of Android development tools. As Preeti Lobana, head of Google India, put it, this is about making AI inclusive, scalable, and grounded in trust. Apart from this AI, how, how AI can be used across the platforms like Android, where we can just do some uh, all the versioning side, like it is a very difficult task, all the, there are issues when we do version upgrade, so uh, there's agents that can do directly for us, so these kind of uh, things which we learned, so mostly these are the few things which we are uh, taking from him. Got it, great. Since we are also into the Google images, image search, no? Yeah. And they are also similar, I mean, doing something similar to that, and, uh, and they said like they had a 32% increase from I mean, after implementing that uh, search experience, improving the search experience. So yeah, that is the main takeaway from me. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking to implement the same in our company as well. Uh, key moment key of today yeah. Yeah. was like, uh, um, there was one person who came to me like, uh, understanding things. So uh, he tried to communicate and we, we connected so nice. 
nicely he understood how things are working and how he can you know get a mentor out of me so uh, that is where i helped him around ai and everything and it was a wonderful opportunity from cricket match cartoons to dolphin llms from androidify bots to multi language tutors google io connect india wasn't just a showcase it was a handoff a call for indian developers to take the wheel and from what i saw they already have it was big immersive and without a doubt ai ruled that's all for this episode of point break i'll be back with more updates from tech that's shaping the developers and startup ecosystem until then stay sharp stay curious and think ai think aim <laughs>